if you've queued into this video, you probably figured out you're looking at a Triumph 1200 XE Scrambler. And uh, I've had quite a few people ask me about this bike, whether I'm pulling into a gas station or people on the road that I meet or uh, just my friends and family. So uh, I thought I would take a few minutes and talk about the bike. I've had it about six months and kind of do a 2,000 mile review and talk about really what what I've done to it, how it's worked out, what's worked out, what hasn't worked out, and uh, kind of solicit your comments and ideas as well. But, uh, but yeah, like I said, I've got uh, 2,000 miles on it, riding it in uh, dirt, gravel, mud, snow. Um, actually went on a pretty good camping trip on the Magruder Corridor Trail. Had a good time. But uh, I will tell you, wonderful bike. It is not a motocross bike unless your name is Ernie Vigil, um, the Triumph uh, Company rider. But uh, but it's great on gravel and two tracks and, and you know, traveling down the Forest Service roads. And that's what I've used it for. And it's, it's really been great. Um, but I'll talk a little bit about what I like and what I don't like. Um, this thing's been described as a naked adventure bike, and I, I think that's probably a fair assessment. That's exactly what it is, and uh, and uh, it's really it's been great. I uh, kind of go over the things I've done to it and the options that I've put onto it, kind of nose to tail walk around. Uh, the Dart Marlin windscreen has been great it's really although it's small it's really really knocked down a lot of wind and uh, I don't want to be one of these guys that buys a naked adventure bike and then complains about the wind but you're riding on the highway for a couple of hours this makes a big difference I also got the, the headlight cover from the factory I had the guys at the dealership throw on a few options which was the high mud flap or the high fender the uh, engine guards, the radiator guard, put the Triumph handlebar cross member across the top. I don't really know what that does, but it I guess it looks okay. I don't really care for these mirrors. Kind of walking around the bike. Um, I've never liked tank bags, so this is a Moscow Moto Pico tank bag. And um, it's... I really like it. It's great. It's just a small bag, carry my wallet and cell phone, and knife and passport or whatever, but it doesn't get in my way and uh, it really actually does work really good. So I like that quite a bit. Next uh, upgrade was this uh, seat pad by Alaska Leather, I believe is the name of the company, and uh, out of Anchorage. They uh, were really good to deal with and it actually helps quite a bit. Doesn't solve all the problems, but uh, but it helps a lot. All right, if you have this bike or have a scrambler like this with high exhaust, you already know where I'm going next. And the baggage luggage issue was something that I spent a lot of time trying to think about, and I ended up going with a framework from a company called Unit Garage out of Italy. And they had the frame, and uh, this really this adapter plate right here as well. But uh, uh, I ordered it; they were good to deal with, and got it in about four or five weeks and bolted it up. And I really think it's one of the best options I've seen for uh, for luggage on this on this kind of a bike. Um, I also, obviously, you can see I'm trying not to make this a Moscow Moto commercial, but you can see that uh, I've got the Moscow Moto Scout uh, system on it, panniers, and I really, really do like this. Uh, these are dry bags that just pop in here, and when you get to your campsite or your hotel, you can just pop this out, pull the bag out, go to your hotel or you can't throw on your campsite. So, so far I, I really like it. Um, I think it's the right size for this bike and uh, and it works really good, it's really versatile. And 30 liter top tail bag has worked really well. I can just kind of grab and go with that. I also, uh, 
move these tail lights up, uh, turn signals up to the top fender. It looked kind of goofy hanging down there the way the factory had it. So that was one thing I had the dealership do. All right. You're probably asking what's all this adventure set up and all this gear. Well, my plan next year is to ride this Triumph motorcycle all the way above the Arctic Circle to either Prudhoe Bay or uh, up to uh, up the Dempster Highway to, to the Arctic Ocean. And uh, if you look at the distances, I have to be able to drive 248 miles without a refuel stop. So I have to carry fuel. This is a 4.2 gallon tank. And um, these are roto packs. I got one on this side, and I'm going to get another one for the other side. But these uh, these Scout uh, 25 liter or yeah 25 liter systems, they're already pre-drilled for this uh, for these roto packs. So I don't know if you're a fan of roto packs or not, but it seemed like the best system to work for this. I'm going to throw another one gallon tank on the other side, and that's what I found, which think will work the best but uh, if you have any other ideas I'm, I'd love to hear from you so go to the comment section and tell me about it um, also install the center stand and although that weighs about 12 or 13 pounds I use it all the time and I think it's really helpful so um, no regrets there whatsoever now I love this bike I really, I really do, and it's been wonderful. It's the first bike I've owned in probably 15 years. My roots are in dirt biking, so I'm comfortable with tall suspension. The seat height on this is 34.2 inches. Just for reference point, I am uh, I'm 5'10 with a 32-inch inseam, and it's tall. I mean, but, you know, it's like anything else. I'm not going to get off of my 16-hand mule on a downhill side. I'm going get to up, get up and mount them on the... On the uphill side so it's just something that for me I just got to plan for I haven't dropped the bike or anything like that and once I get on it it's wonderful I just got to plan on it a little bit and get used to it and and I was fine I was fine I'm 510 and 32 inch inseam like I said and I really have no issues with it at all if you were a lot shorter you might have an issue with it but uh, but I don't I, I've gotten used to it and love the way it rides the fit and finish on this bike is just something I absolutely love and it rides a six-speed 1200 cc low-end torque the machine has just been wonderful 21 inch front wheel 17 inch rear wheel is a great combination for the twisties uh, get off on the dirt and the gravel it does great um, it's just been it's been wonderful it's been an incredible experience I can't imagine not having this bike and really triumph I think with the exception of a few things has really hit a home run here. They've really done an incredible job. The reviews are, uh, if you've checked the reviews on this bike, it's just amazing. And uh, it's a very capable machine in the right hands. I'm not saying on the right hands, but I've certainly enjoyed it. Um, so what I, like anything, there's always a compromise. And what I don't like about it, let me, let me tell you what that is real quick. Um, so I had this tall fender put on. And if you read any reviews, this fender is really high and has a tendency to uh, throw mud up into the uh, radiator guard and cause the motor to overheat. Now I saw a lot of comments and a lot of reviews that that's happened. It's never happened to me because I've never let it get so far and I've been very aware of it. But, uh, but it certainly would have I continued. So you might be able to see I spent $10 at Amazon and I bought an old mud flap and cut it to fit under there and put it it's about eight inches nine inches long and uh, works good in fact it works great it's pretty much eliminated the problem but the frustrating thing is <laughs> that should have been a factory issue Triumph should have resolved that that's a that's a big design flaw and then as they say the grill in the room obviously before I bought the bike I read all the comments about the heat off the exhaust and that it was unbearable. When I started riding this in Montana in March and April and I really didn't understand what the problem was, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. But when I started riding it in July and got in traffic and got stopped at a stop sign, it, it was a big deal. And it was it is it is really uncomfortable. And there's no way to sugarcoat it. It is freaking uncomfortable. 
So I put some thermal insulation tape, I pulled off those covers, did that. I think that helped a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and decad it this spring before I take my trip to the Arctic and uh, put that Four Seasons uh, pipe in. It looks like a pretty easy bolt-up system. But that, that really is a, a problem that Triumph should have resolved. It's just, and it, it's not a casual thing. It is really pretty. If you ride in traffic and you deal with that, it is an unbearable situation. But besides that, man, I, I love the bike. I mean, if, if, you're, if you're interested in a bike like this, I've ridden this thing, like I said, 2,000 miles. Changed the oil, adjusted the chain, lubed the chain, tightened a few bolts that loosened up. It's been, it's been so much fun. I just can't imagine life without it right now. But, uh. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you uh, got something out of it. This is my idea for kind of a naked adventure bike and heading to Alaska next year, and I'll update everybody later on that. But uh, if you got any ideas or comments, please, please add them in the comment section. I'd appreciate it. Uh, I'm no expert at this. I'm kind of learning as I go, but I can tell you that I'm having a lot of fun. So thanks, and, and ride safely.